Welcome to the Glow Getters Podcast. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt, and I'm your host. I teach and inspire leaders to step into their productive selves and find their true potential. I'm a passionate creative and scientist with over eight years of healthcare leadership experience. At age 25, I stepped into my first management role and didn't find the leadership advice I was looking for. So here I'm giving you the tools to end burnout and enjoy a vibrant career and life. Glad you're here to learn and grow with me. Now, on with the show. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so excited you're here listening to the Glow Getters podcast. I'm Kayla. I'm excited to be talking to you today about persistence versus tenacity. I also wanted to just acknowledge the fact that um, there's been a lot of talk, especially on social media, about being productive during this time. And I put this time in air quotes um, because I'm kind of tired of saying during this time, the elephant in the room, depending on when you're listening to this, is with COVID-19, everything's going on, and there's been all this push to be productive because we have all this extra time, especially if you're not working or you're working from home. And so this thought has been kind of swirling around in my mind about being um, productive, and uh, and I think there's definitely a place for rest during this time. I've definitely felt like I've needed it as well with being bombarded with working a ton from home um, and working at the hospital. But I also did want to acknowledge the healthcare workers and the essential workers who are having to work and continue to work and maybe don't have um, time for respite. Or maybe we're doing kind of the same things, but, um, and we're not like going above and beyond, but we have to keep working. We have to persist. And I'd actually argue that we have to be tenacious in our approach. So I feel like this group is a little bit forgotten that a lot of people are talking about like if you're at home, it's a time to slow down and um, kind of gather your thoughts. And I've definitely felt that too and kind of realigned with what's most important. And at the same time, I want to acknowledge that, well, I'm still working, so I do definitely need tools to help me carry on and move forward um, because my work is not going away. <laughs> the things I have to do every day aren't going away. So why would I stop, you know, my in my approach? I, I still need tools in my toolkit to keep going, to do better, to improve every single day. And so um, this episode is just brought to you by me thinking through, okay, what do I need to do right now to keep moving forward and to keep improving my situation, right? Because we can stay the same or we can improve, right? We're either choosing to stay the same or move backwards or improve. And I think most of us are humans and we all wanna be better, right? And we all need to find better ways of doing things. I've definitely felt that I've needed to kind of change my approach as I work from home. And so I wanna talk today about persistence versus tenacity. And this can be for anybody, not just healthcare workers, but definitely feel like it's something to acknowledge that you guys are doing a great job and every single day we're getting better. So the first thing I want to talk about is persistence. So do you ever feel like you're doing the same things over and over, but maybe you're not getting the results that you want? You're persistent and consistent as all get out, but you don't seem to be getting anywhere. So I've felt this way before. I've definitely been there. I think when we feel like we're just doing the things, we're firm, we're obstinate, and we're continuing our course of action um, in spite of it being super difficult or there being opposition, that never feels very good, right? I get this kind of visceral or gut feeling in my stomach where I'm like, something needs to change. I've got to do something different to get different results. And sometimes it's really easy to just sit in that that space of, I'm just gonna keep plugging away even though I'm coming up against barriers and this isn't working because either I'm really bombarded with a lot of other things that are going on and I'm just like, I don't have time to think about how I could do this differently. All I have time for is just knowing like, okay, I'm gonna check the box and get that thing done. Or I know I need to change, but I know that changing is gonna be hard. And I hear this a lot, change is hard. Um, and I, I don't think changing is hard. I think admitting that you need to change can be hard because our ego gets in the way. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I finally admit to myself that something I'm trying isn't working and it's not going as planned, it's like a hundred million billion times easier to move on once I've admitted that to myself because it never feels good to feel like I failed, right? But really, you haven't failed. You've just learned something. And if you take the time to reflect on that thing, you can make it even better. So that's the difference between being persistent and being tenacious. A tenacious person comes in and does things a little bit differently than a persistent person. So let me do like a side-by-side comparison for you of persistent versus tenacious people. So a persistent person applies the same methods over and over, even if the method isn't providing results or is wasteful. Tenacious people reflect on the results they're, they're getting using that method, and they take action to improve the method to obtain better results. Do you see the difference? Persistent people just keep plugging away, whereas a tenacious person actually asks themselves, is this working and how can I make it better? Persistent people tend to get the same results every time, and they don't learn anything new about the method's effectiveness. Whereas a tenacious person gets better each time and or they learn what works well and what doesn't work well. So having new information in front of you to say like, I tried this thing, but it didn't get me the results I wanted. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do something else. And the persistent person burns out due to lack of progress and loss of purpose. They start asking themselves questions like, well, why am I doing this thing anyways? Like, how did I get into this? What if I just didn't do this thing? Maybe this isn't important. They start devaluing themselves and they might not even feel like they're worthy of the job. It's because they're not analyzing or changing or pivoting. They're just doing the same thing and they've lost why they even started because they aren't even seeing results. They must think like, this is flawed. I'm not good enough, right? But a tenacious person excels in their work with increased motivation and excitement for new beginnings because they are seeing results. And even when they quote unquote fail, they learn something that helps them move forward. So I just wanted to define tenacity, just my own definition um, in four bullet points. And here's what I think being tenacious or having tenacity means. It's reflecting on your results, learning from your previous action and methods, changing your approach as needed, and improving through experimentation. So I do want to talk about that third bullet point, that changing your approach as needed. So um, I'm not suggesting that you change your approach every single day or every single time that you do something. I think that results do take time and they do take consistency or being persistent over time. Uh, you probably won't see results in your method instantly. And I think that's really hard for us as we are an instant gratification society with all the technology that we have at our fingertips. Sometimes you may see a glimmer of positive results, but you do want to kind of collect enough data to show like, is this working over a multitude of situations? Do I have a representative sample of times where this thing's going to work? So I know I'm getting like uber nerdy on you right now, but essentially... What I'm saying is like, try your approach a few times or maybe like a week or, or, or something like that before you do decide to change your approach and really ask yourself good questions to know if your current approach is working or if you should pivot and do something new. So I'm going to actually walk you through the approach that I use to be tenacious and to improve. So Like I said, essentially, I believe our goal in life and work is continuous improvement. You know, we all want to be better. That doesn't mean that we want to keep striving for like these outrageous titles or opportunities or whatever. It just means that every day we want to be better people, right? Like I always say, how can we be 1% better today? You know, And if you keep getting better, you keep getting kinder, you're more efficient, you learn stuff, right? You get wiser as you get older. Um, And so this idea of continuous improvement is actually um, a concept from Lean. 
So I've talked about lean a little bit before on the podcast, but lean is just a way of thinking and lean is something kind of that originated out of manufacturing. Um, and they use this concept called PDCA and it stands for plan, do, check, act. So planning is um, kind of where you're brainstorming about your problem. Like what's your problem and what's your goal? What's your target end goal? So kind of what's your current state and where do you hope to be? And kind of thinking through like, well, what can I do to get from my current state to my target or my goal? How could I eliminate this problem? What can I do to overcome a barrier? Do is to take action on your plan, the thing that you decided you were going to change. And you can do the improvement um, on a small scale. So I like to say, do a small test of change and see if you think what you thought would happen happens. And then you want to check. So observe, gather data. Did your improvement plan work as expected? Did the problem go away? Are you at your target situation from your current state? Are you closer to your target? So I'm going to give you guys a few questions that you can ask yourself to do this check or what I like to call a reflection. And then the A for PDCA is ACT and it's reacting based on your results. So essentially, basically, if your results worked, then you know that the improvement that you made worked. So if it's working, then you want to keep doing that thing and implement it as kind of your standard thing that you always do. If it didn't work, how can you tweak it? What are you going to do differently? And then you want to act and go do that. So you're kind of starting your experimentation process over. So let me uh, kind of talk you through this. Um, I have actually, I wanted to let you guys know, created a graphic PDF all explaining all this process that's going to walk you through. And I actually created some questions that you could do to practice. So write down an example. You can do this right now during the podcast or I have the tool that you can use afterwards. But think about it in your mind. If you're driving, if you're in a shower, uh, if you're at work, um, maybe you're like on a walk with your kiddos, whatever you're doing, maybe you're working out practice. Write down an example or think of a recent experience you've had or a recent problem that you're working through and answer the questions for yourself. And it doesn't have to be elaborate, maybe just a sentence or two. The first question is, what am I trying to accomplish? What's my target or goal state? And where am I at today, my current state? So this question is helping you walk through the plan part and kind of gather like what's actually happening and what do I need to do what, where do I want to be? The second question is, what's working well and what isn't working as well as I'd hoped, right? So this is saying like, well, what do I, you know, enjoy and what is working right now for me and giving me results, but what is actually not working? And this would be the thing that maybe I need to explore more and decide what I need to do differently. The thing that's not getting your results. Number three, what have I done in the past that's worked well? This is where you draw from your previous successes and experiments and basically tell yourself like, I can do hard things. <laughs> I can make these things happen. But then you think about like, how did I find success in that other situation? Could I pull from what I did there and experiment with it here? Number four, what have I seen others do that's worked well for them? So if you're not able to think of something that you've done well, or maybe you are, but you'd like some other perspectives, what have you seen others do that has given them success in something related to this? You know, um, is it uh, your boss, something your boss does that maybe you could try? Is it a fellow colleague that's finding success? Is it your mom? What have, other, what have I seen others do that's working well for them or has worked well for them? And then number five, Kind of bringing everything together is what could I do differently? What could I do differently? So basically right here, these questions are making you reflect, but also kind of create, create a plan. So these questions you can ask when you're doing the planning, but also during your reflection or your check stage of plan, do, check, act. So now that you've answered the questions, you do want to create your plan, but here's the kicker. You have to pick one thing that you can do to improve your situation. 
there's always so many things that we think about that we're like, oh, we could change this and we could change this and we can change this. And here's the thing. In science, we talk a lot about changing one variable at a time so we can tell if that thing is having an effect because then we can test it in isolation. And I'm not saying you have to be uber scientific about this, but I will say it keeps it really easy and streamlined for you to improve something. And because you're not like overwhelmed in your head, like, oh, I got to do it like 180 degrees different. No, you just have to tweak your situation just a little bit. So let me walk you through answers to these questions that I did in a recent experience. So um, my experience is that I've been working from home, but I'm having to meet daily with some physicians to coordinate some efforts around convalescent plasma and other things. And so um, these meetings have been amazing. They've been wonderful and great and super productive. But what's been really difficult is that every document that we create has been shared via email. And these like five providers or more, we've all been working on these documents and there's like several million, jillion versions being sent to me via email. <laughs> okay, it's a hyperbole, but literally I'll get documents that's like, this is version eight. And then like two minutes later, just kidding, use this version. And it's really, really hard to keep track of what version's current and all these different edits and like combining multiple people's edits, right? So I'm hearing from people on the team like this is really stressful. Um, and we even had a person forget that we had created a specific document and like recreated it because we couldn't tell like what documents we had created and we didn't realize how much work we had done. So if I go through these questions, number one, what am I trying to accomplish, target or goal state, and where am I today, current state? Well, I think I want to make it more organized for our team to operate more efficiently so that there's not extra re rework and that there's not an overwhelm of like email overload. So current state, like all floodgates are open and it's not really organized at all, but future state like would love some kind of organized method in which we all are aware of what documents are created and perhaps we could all edit them together and there's not like several different versions throwing being thrown around two what's working well and what isn't working as well as hoped well what's working well is our team is super collaborative and everybody's really willing to make edits and is aware of all the hard work but what isn't working well is that we're not sure who's working on what and where we're at in the stages of all the different documents. Number three, what have I done in the past that's worked well? Well, I can think of a lot of things. I usually use technology. I think about my experience with school. So in my master's program, anytime we work in groups, every it's automatic we create a Google Doc on Google Drive and we share the documents and we just go in there and edit together. So perhaps I could do that. Number four, what have I seen others do that's worked well for them? Well, you know, I think that other people are at least clear on what's an issue for them. So I haven't brought it up yet that this is overwhelming me, but I have asked for documents to be resent to me. So perhaps I just need to communicate and see if others feel the same. Number five, what could I do differently? Well, I think I could communicate that I need a different way to be organized and see if anybody else feels the same. And maybe I could suggest Google Docs. So you guys, the one thing that I changed that I am starting to implement as of yesterday, <laughs> when I'm recording this episode as of yesterday, is that I suggested we use Google Docs and I just went for it and I created folders for all the documents and shared this. And there was a lot of hesitation, I won't lie, for people to use Google Docs. And I had some encouragement from a friend on Instagram, um, Alexa, shout out to you. I was talking about being overwhelmed on my email on my Insta stories. Um, and, sh and if you're not following me, I'm at Kayla Fahey Arndt. And she goes, why aren't you guys using like technology? And we talked about the different forms and how our organization's complex. 
And I finally said, you know, thanks for pointing it out. I'm going to stop being a victim to like email and I'm going to actually, instead of stop judging, start helping. If you guys have heard of Cy Wakeman, she, she talks about stop judging, start helping. And I'm like, you know what? If people are scared or afraid to use this online platform, I just need to take the plunge and create a, like a template, um, so I actually created a work aid for how to use Google Drive and how we would use it for these documents. So I know some of you listening, your millennials, like I'm 29 to give you guys perspective. You're probably thinking like, seriously, they need a, <laughs> they, they need a like one page, like work aid for how to use Google Doc. But I'm like, yes, you guys. Yes. And you'd be surprised how many people, especially in healthcare, we don't get like the most updated version of Microsoft Office Suite. Like we've been working on, I don't know, like the latest, like really old version of Windows. We don't even have Windows 10 yet. So like we never get to try new technology at work. And because of HIPAA, there's a lot of things we can't share online. And so a lot of times it's just like a secure email, (laughs) which sounds just crazy to me. Like I'm we finally, I mean, we still use the fax machine. So um, no wonder there's fear. So you know what? I My test of change was I created a um, document that was a work aid and I put everything up there. And you know what? I got two separate emails saying, Kayla, this is so helpful. I wasn't brave enough to mention that the emails were overwhelming. I just thought I was supposed to handle it. Whoa. And then number two, Someone emailed me and said, Kayla, I didn't even realize how much work we had already done over the last four weeks. This is amazing. Thank you so much. It makes way more sense to do it this way. So the feedback that I'm gathering, my reflection is it seems to be working well. Now, over time, I'm going to see like, are people struggling to get into the documents? Are people creating new documents? Are they downloading the document? Like all these, these pieces of information I can gather but then I can tweak it to suggest different ways to use Google Docs. So that's how, um, that's my story. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, X number of, your results don't have to be like specific data, like, oh, I got X number of sales this week, but they could be. So it can either be more qualitative, like this is working well for us to use Google Drive versus like I sold five things this month. Either way, you can move from persistence to having tenacity. So just to recap and wrap this episode in a bow, are you persistent or tenacious? Persistent person applies the same methods over and over, even if the method isn't providing results or is wasteful. Whereas a tenacious person reflects on the results they get using a method, they take action to improve their method to obtain better results. And in the end, they excel in their work because they have increased motivation and excitement for new beginnings because good things keep happening to them. Whereas the persistent person burns out due to lack of progress and loss of purpose. So you guys, make sure you're practicing this plan, do, check, act process to be continuously improving. And I like to call it PDCAing. I just add the ING on the end of it. If you like this episode and you want to go through these questions, I actually created a really nice three-page PDF where I go through point by point of this podcast. And then I have the questions so you can write them down, um, type them out or write them down. I also have a graphic explaining PDCA. So that's all there. So you don't have to remember it. So you can get that at my website. It's glowgetterslife.com slash blog and then I will post the recording of this episode plus this PDF there. You can um, go snag that. Otherwise, I will put that in my a link to it in my show notes and you can snag it there. So guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope this helps you in a season where you know there is a time needed for rest and there's a time needed for productivity. A lot of us are still having to work And you know what, even if you're not working, there are things in your life right now based on working at, you know, living at home or, or, you know, trying to do better with your kids at home, things that you can continuously improve. So the methods of moving towards a more tenacious mindset can help you 
no matter what state you're in. And it doesn't have to be this crazy 180. It can just be a small test of change. How can you be 1% better today? How can you be 1% better tomorrow? All right, guys, have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next time. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening to the Glow Getters podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave me a good rating and review on iTunes. It really helps me get this podcast in front of other people. If you'd like to connect with me, please follow me on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt. And you can always check out my website for more content, blog posts, and recipes at glowgetterslife.com. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.